created the world, he filled it with many different creatures, each one enriching all the others. And God planted one special seed in the world, and it was behalf, on behalf of this seed that everything was created and all things were made so that this seed would be able to grow and produce fruit. This special seed that God planted was our first parents, Adam and Eve. He planted them in this world so that they might grow and produce fruit that could then be gathered into the heavenly kingdom. And even though this seed was damaged by sin, still God did not give up on mankind, but provided a way that all men might grow and mature and be gathered into the kingdom of heaven. That seed is still growing in the world, and even though some elements have finished their time in the world, other elements are still growing and maturing. God is waiting for the fullness of time, for the seed to fully mature before he, before he comes to reap the fruits of mankind. When the time is fully come, then Jesus Christ will return to this world, this time not as a redeemer, but now as a judge. He will come to reap the fruit that he planted, and all of mankind, every person who ever lived or ever will live in this world, will stand before his judgment, and he will separate the fruit, that is the wheat, from, the, chip, from uh, uh, the good fruit, that is the wheat, from the bad fruit, that is the chaff. This is the great judgment that awaits us at the end of the world, which we remember today. Up until this point, the pre-Lenten Gospels, we, uh, we've, read, we've read of the mercy of God. However, today we hear of a different aspect. We hear of his justice. Just as in the parable of the talents, God will ask each of us what we have done with the life that he has given us and expect us to present him with the products of our lives. God doesn't care for anything of worldly value, so neither gold nor silver will be of any value to him. Worldly fame and fortune will be worth nothing. The only thing that we can present to him is a righteous life, filled with the grace and adorned with the virtues. Anything else is worthless. Woe unto the man who has nothing to give to God, for he shall then be treated as the servant who did nothing with his master's talent. And even that which he had will be taken from him, and he will be cast out of the master's house. He will inherit only weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth, the agony of eternal fire, and will eternally be eaten by the worm that doesn't die. Blessed, however, will be the man who has dilig diligently labored to acquire and build up the grace of God in his own life and to cultivate within himself the virtues in order to realize the image of God with which we are created. How then do we labor to acquire these spiritual riches? In the gospel today, our Lord gave us six requirements that are accessible to everyone, that define how we live a righteous life and how we acquire the grace of God. These six requirements are giving food to the hungry, providing drink to the thirsty, showing hospitality to strangers, clothing the naked, visiting the sick, and visiting prisoners. Notice here that there's no mention of things like miracles or fasting or asceticism and so on. He simply requires of us the simple and ordinary acts of showing compassion to one another. When we see someone in need, then we step in to offer that compassionate aid. Remember that the greatest commandment is to love God, and the second commandment, which grows out of the first and is the product of it, is to love your neighbor as yourself. If we fulfill the first commandment, if we love God above all else, then the second commandment will naturally be fulfilled in our lives. We will see others as God sees them. God looks at us and sees our poverty. He sees our sickness, which leads to death. He sees our captivity to sin, and he doesn't turn away from us but rather reaches out to us, offering to fill our needs from the wealth of his own being. If we have his love in us, then we will naturally act as he does. When we see someone who is hungry, we will feed him, just as our Lord fed us with his most holy body. When we see someone who is thirsty, we will give him a drink. 
just as God gives to us his own most precious blood. When we see someone who is a stranger, we will provide a place for him, just as God shelters us within his heavenly kingdom. When we see someone who is naked, we will clothe him, just as God sees our nakedness and clothes us with the brilliant and priceless garments of grace. When we see someone who is sick, we will visit him and bring comfort and relief, just as God sees our sickness and comes bringing the comfort of his presence and the medicine of his grace and the relief of his mercy. When we see someone who is in prison, we will go to him and provide whatever we can to ease his captivity and obtain his release if possible, just as God sees our captivity to sin and provides us with the means to break the chains of our captivity and lifting us up carries us to freedom. We need only to act like God, to manifest in our lives his compassion, his mercy, and most importantly, his love. When we join ourselves to our Lord Jesus Christ through repentance in the sacrament of baptism, we become part of his body, and as such we become his instruments by which he expresses his love to the world. Now consider this whenever you come into contact with anyone, friend, neighbor, stranger, co-worker, or whoever. You are the expression and vehicle of God's love towards that person. Do not act in your own interest, but act according to God's love. Whenever you align yourself so perfectly with God's love, you yourself are changed and drawn more closely into communion with God. The fruits of the Holy Spirit, that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, tolerance, and self-control, begin to grow and develop within your heart. These are the fruits of compassion, mercy, and love that you can present to God when he requires of you the products of your life. When you lay down these riches at the feet of our great Lord and Judge, he will then say to you, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. My brothers and sisters, remember today that we are reminded that our lives are given to us by God for a purpose. And that time will come. Indeed, it is coming ever nearer when we will be expected to give God an accounting of how we use the gifts that he has given us. It is therefore of the utmost importance to acquire the grace of God through these compassionate acts done for the sake of the love of God, so that we will not stand empty-handed before the throne of the divine judge. The consequences of neglecting to labor for God are dire and frightening. The rewards, however, of a righteous life, a life of compassion and love for our neighbor, are joyful and delightful beyond compare. Let us choose to labor each and every day to acquire this grace. Let us love God and our neighbor that we might ourselves hear those blessed words from his mouth. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.